I, I, I always remember there's a, there's a, a guy um, who I met along the way, uh, Martin, who um, I met, I met a, he, he, he lived near Leeds. So he and I met up and I, th I think he might have been one of the first people I actually met with face to face who had sort of engaged with through email. And, um, and here with, here with, you know, two people who um, with this, this health issue that no one, no one would know we had because it is completely invisible. There's no sort of signs of it or anything. Um, being able to sort of sit down and talk about what it's meant to us and and what that you know, then there's a sort of a bond that forms and there's this way of because I think you know, looking back, looking back to the sort of you know the months and and you know probably years after accident, it did sort of shift my. Um, it did sort of change how I engaged with the world around me. And I think I did become more sort of um, maybe a bit more introvert and um, it, it, doing all this sort of opened, opened the world up again for me. I think it's finding a different way or different ways of having that connection. And, um, and then what also happened was I read about this professor in Germany in the book, Professor Thomas Hummel, I wrote to Thomas and he introduced me to a guy called Carl Philpott and um, Professor Carl Philpott, who the previous year had set up the UK's first NHS smell and taste clinic. I wrote to Carl. He and I started talking. By, by this point, I realised that there wasn't just, yeah, I wasn't on my own with this, as I thought I'd, I'd, I had been for years. There were lots of other people like me and there was no there was no support or, or, or information for them either. So I created the charity. I created Fifth Sense, you know, that initially with the with the goal of creating the organization that I wished had been there to support me when I'd had the accident and off we went.